Welcome back to Ancient Recipes with me, Sola. We're in the middle of our episodes taking a look at ancient desserts. In this episode, we're going way, way, way back 1300 years to make one of the oldest, and I mean oldest cookies ever discovered intact. Hey there, I'm Sola El Whaley, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. It's a little cooking, a little history, and a whole lot of me. What's not to love? These cookies are an archeological miracle. This find was so incredible, not just because of the age of the cookies, but also because they were found intact and beautifully intricate. These bakers had to have some skills to be able to make these cookies during a time where there were no temperature controlled ovens, no stand mixers, no silicone spatulas. Well, you get the point. Okay, okay, so what am I talking about? Who made these cookies? And more importantly, where on earth did they find them? In 1915, an archaeologist named Mark Oral Stein found an ancient tomb in Xinjiang, China, where the residents of Gaocheng City were buried. Gaocheng was a wealthy and prosperous city located along the Silk Road. This was the main trade route between Arabia, Persia, and China. They traded any number of items on the Silk Road, including olives and grapes coming to the east, then citrus heading west. The city and tomb became a mix of so many different people because of the trade routes. In the tomb, the majority of the people were found to be Han Chinese, but some were buried with Byzantine coins in their mouth and others with Iraqi and Persian textiles, showing just how multicultural the city was. These cookies all have different looks. Two instantly jump out looking very similar to modern thumbprint cookies. This one looks like it was piped out to form that shape, and these two almost look like Swiss roll cookies. I don't know about you, but I'm very excited to recreate these. And a little nervous, these cookies seem a bit intense, we're gonna make three different versions of them. The little jam tarts that look like thumbprint cookies, the ones that are a little twisty like pretzels, and the little swirly rolled up ones that are kind of like triangles. We're gonna start with some softened butter and sugar. Now we don't know exactly what the ingredients were in this cookie. Scientists weren't able to figure it out, but we do know that there was some kind of grain. We actually ended up going with this whole wheat flour dough, and that's gonna be for the thumbprint and the little swirly cinnamon roll type of cookies. And then for the pretzel dough, we switched to all purpose because we needed a little bit more gluten development in order for it to be flexible enough to form that shape. So I'm gonna start by creaming together butter and sugar. We also found that when the butter was too warm, the dough was a little bit too greasy and hard to mold. So it's important to start with that perfectly pliable room temperature. And now that this is looking like light and creamy, we're gonna add an egg. Once again, the scientists weren't able to confirm or deny the presence of an egg. Everything's nicely mixed together. It's time to add our flour. I'm just gonna mix it until it comes together into a nice dough. You don't wanna overwork it too much but you also don't wanna have any dry pockets of flour, any weird lumps. You wanna make sure everything's nice and even and smooth, and then stop. We're not gonna knead this like a bread dough. I think the whole wheat flour is gonna add a really nice nutty taste, almost like graham cracker vibes. When I was a kid, I really wanted to make my own graham crackers and I searched the world for graham flour, but it's a lie. Graham crackers are just made with whole wheat flour. All of that nuttiness, it comes from whole wheat. So I think this is gonna give us that kind of nostalgic graham cracker taste. We're gonna give it a few more mixes. I'm actually gonna use my hand now to just make sure it's all evenly mixed. Before they had the electric refrigerator, there was a device called the ice container, which was made of bronze or wood, and it had two layers. They would fill the outer layer with ice cubes, and food and drinks went into the inner layer to chill. All right, my dough is nicely mixed, but it is a little soft, so I need to chill it before I can form the cookies. I'm gonna cover this up and pop it in the refrigerator. Now that our dough has been refrigerated, we can begin shaping each of the cookies. I'm gonna cut this in half because we're gonna use half for the spiral cookies and half for the thumbprints. Now, the toughest part of developing this was figuring out how to do it without plastic wrap. So. 
I'm going to do the first roll on an oiled board, and then I'm going to transfer it to a towel to help me roll it up. But if you're doing this today, you can just do this all on plastic wrap. Get it nice and slick. I'm going for a rectangle. It's almost like we're going to make a teeny tiny cinnamon bun. And I'm just going to be real slow and gentle because I don't want the dough to crack. Whenever you're rolling dough, it's important to push outward rather than down. Because if you push down, that's when you end up with your dough rolling out really unevenly. Start in the middle and roll out. Start in the middle, roll out. Now that we've gotten like most of the way rolled, I'm gonna switch over to our towel and we're gonna take it a little bit thinner. Okay, before I roll these up, I'm gonna trim off the edges just to make it a little bit neat. And the great thing is we can use this for our thumbprint cookies so the trim won't go to waste. No one was wasting anything back then. Someone probably hand smashed this flour, right? Turned the butter, made the cane sugar by boiling down syrup from stalks of cane they made themselves. Wow, we really do have it easy these days. Okay, I got a nice little rectangle. Now I'm gonna sprinkle on this cinnamon sugar. And this cinnamon sugar is gonna make sure we get that like dark little spiral in the middle. It smells so good. Cinnamon and sugar with the whole wheat, these are gonna be really tasty. I'm gonna pat this just to kind of gently press it into the dough. And we're gonna roll this up. Make that first part tight, otherwise you end up with a gap. And I'm just kind of, I'm using the towel to kind of roll and press until we get a nice little log. It's so soothing. The thing about baking, especially with cookies, you feel like a kid again because you're just playing with dough. And then at the end of it, you get to eat it, which I guess when you're a kid, you ate your Play-Doh too, right? I used to do all, all kinds of like arts and craftsy things like paint and sculpt and all that stuff when I was younger. But the only thing I ever really like stuck with was food because it's the only time you get to eat what you've been working on. And what's better than that, right? So I'm gonna use the towel to kind of pull it almost like we're rolling sushi, right? Use it to help me form my log. And now we've got this nice little log of dough. I'm gonna roll it up in the towel and I'm gonna let this chill once again, so it's nice and firm so that when I slice it, I can keep those spirals intact. So my roll has chilled. It's time to form. I'm gonna be really careful because it does crack. Each cookie is gonna have five of these little swirls. I'm going about a quarter inch thick. And you can see that little cinnamon swirl in the center. These are gonna be really delicious. There's no reason why they can't be an addition to your holiday cookie box. I always try to do a holiday cookie box, but it is so much work, it really is. Okay, I'm gonna take these five spirals, pop them on my tray, and then just gonna try and kind of squish it into a triangle, just like that. Speaking of holiday cookie box, this looks like a Christmas tree. I'm gonna just go ahead and stack up another one just same deal, really delicately slice. Whenever you're slicing a round cookie like this, a good way to keep it round is after every slice, give it a little turn. But this dough is so forgiving. All right, so here we have our ancient spiral cookies. And now I'm gonna take that lump of dough we have left over from these. 
and I'm going to start making my thumbprint cookies. But before we make those jam tarts, a few weeks ago, I talked with Miranda Brown, who is the professor of Chinese studies at the University of Michigan, and she had some really good insight on what life would have been like in Western China at this time. Hi, Miranda. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks for making the time for us today. The cookies that we're making in this episode come from a really interesting intersection of different cultures on the Silk Road. What are some of the different things that we might have seen coming together there? I mean, it, it was probably a really fun place to party if you sort of go back in time <laughs> to the, the era of the cookie, which is you know probably between 13 and 1700 years ago. Um, I have a friend who's a bioarchaeologist and she said that they had you know, dancers, athletes, um, they had a lot of musicians bringing sort of musical traditions um, from the West to the East. They had a wild mix of religions, um, judging on from the sort of manuscripts that you found from the area, things like, you know, uh, Hebrew language manuscripts, um, things written in Greek, um, obviously Turkic languages, Iranian languages, you know, Buddhism, um, fire worshippers, um, and and Manichaeans um, and Christians, all sort of in one space, um, sort of cohabiting, sometimes fighting, but often, you know, mm -hmm. partying together, eating together, and um, I would say doing a lot of sharing. Wow, I love that. So were these cookies um, sold there? Like, were they part of this party <laughs> vibe? Yeah, I suspect so. I mean, whether there's, you know, restaurants and inns, I suspect there are inns because we have references to, you know, sort of places where travelers have to stop, you know, traveling in a desert is not that pleasant and you need to have places that you can stop and refuel um, and rehydrate. So I, I suspect it's part of that culture of, um, you know, of, you know, traveling um, you know, who exactly ate it? I'm not sure. I think everybody was, you know, was in this, was in that part of the world. It was really a sort of a wild mix of people. So uh, I'm not certain, you know, it's, it belongs to any particular group. Um, I think of it as a sort of a culinary borderland where there's a lot of exchanging going along, uh, going around. So do you know if these cookies were part of a meal or were they like a dessert? So, I mean, the dessert course is a very Western sort of concept. Um, but, you know, if they're in a tomb, they might have been part of a meal or it could have been, you know, a sacrifice to someone who passed away with the idea that they'd be eating that in the next life. Um, so, you know, a lot of times nice foods were offered, you know, as sort of funerary offerings, right? Um, but may have reflected what people were eating, you know, on better days, um, for example, at banquets or on holidays. So it wasn't like an Oreo. You're not having this on a Wednesday. No, no. I'm not with Wednesday. <laughs> That, that phenomenon is, you know, less than 100 years old in, in many parts of the world. Thanks so much for chatting. I'm really excited to try these cookies now. And I feel like we've learned so much about how many cultures really came together on the Silk Road back then. Great. Thank you. So thumbprint cookies, you know, they're pretty easy. We're going to roll it into a ball and put some impressions in there to fill with jam. I like to start by making a log. That just makes it easier to have even portions. My favorite thumbprint cookie by far are the peanut butter blossoms. So classic, peanut butter, and then you press a chocolate kiss in the center. I really don't think you can go wrong. So we got our little balls, and now to shape it, I'm just gonna use the skewer. We start out with this cute little star pattern and then take another little spoon and we have our little spot to fill with jam. Super easy. This is a really cool shape that I haven't done before that I think I'm gonna throw into my rotation of cookies because it's very easy to do and I think it's quite pretty. These look like they're ready for the oven, and we've got one more shape to show you. The twisty pretzel-y cookies. This was actually one of the hardest ones to figure out because figuring out how to make a dough that wants to twist like a pretzel but is still a cookie dough, it was a little challenging, but we nailed it. So this is the exact same ratios as the other cookie dough, but instead of whole wheat, we're using all-purpose flour, and that's all it took to get these 
nice little twisty twist. Gonna make a long noodle. You wanna be really delicate. If it does break apart, don't worry. It comes back together so easily, but even pressure all the way across. And it's just like when you're rolling the dough into a sheet, you wanna start in the middle and work your way out. Just be gentle. Bringing this around, it's a lot like a pretzel, but you just gotta be a little extra gentle because this dough is very fragile. Loop, loop, and bring it down just like that, huh? Now we're gonna do the other side. Come around. Loop. It's actually a really smart way to get a, a pretty cookie that doesn't require any extra special tools or cutters or anything. With how intricate these are, it's pretty amazing that they held up thousands of years later. We got real lucky with that find, right? Okay, there's one. I'm gonna trim off these edges. And any little cracks will just come together once we bake it. I'm gonna use my knife to help me transfer it over because it's a bit delicate. And let's try another one, shall we? I'm just gonna keep making some more of these pretzely cookies and then we're gonna bake them and finally, we're gonna get to taste our ancient cookies. Okay, I have my ancient cookie tin ready and it smells so good. I'm so excited to get in here and start tasting. I'm gonna kick it off with the thumbprint. I'm gonna fill my little thumbprint with some jam. Here we have a bit of peach jam. Oh, it, it really does smell so good. Some of these are still warm. Who doesn't love a warm cookie? And I'm gonna slice up some grape and top it. So pretty, look at that. Wow. Come on. That's wonderful. Okay, okay, I'm gonna have a bite. delicious. It's a cookie. I really, really, really love the nuttiness of the wheat with the fresh fruit. That's really nice. And then the next thing that hits you in the face is butter. That's what you want from a cookie. I like that it's not too sweet, which I think is the best compliment for a dessert. The jam and the fruit, so fresh, so delicious. This is a great cookie. Next, I'm really excited to try the cinnamon swirl. They smell so good. The cinnamon really hits you in the face. Oh, and it's cool. It breaks along the swirl. That's nice. Hey, it's fun. It's almost like those biscuits you pull apart. Cinnamon and sugar and whole wheat, fantastic flavors. It's really delicious. This is a fantastic cookie. And what's really cool, at the bottom, some of the sugar came out of the cookie and caramelized and got extra like dark flavored and crunchy. So I wasn't expecting that. That's a nice fun little surprise. The bottom is just like extra crunchy bits. Awesome. And now let's try our pretzel. So this is the one made with the all-purpose flour dough. Oh, that snapped really nicely. So delicate. With this cookie, I'm getting a lot more of that butter flavor because we don't have the whole wheat, so the flour's kind of neutral in the background. I wanna dunk these in some milk and like have a day. These are all really tasty. Well, the most interesting thing I learned is that you can make very intricate cookies without modern appliances, that maybe whole wheat needs to make its way into my baking, and I'm so glad that I got a new way to shape my thumbprint cookies. It's kind of amazing how food can instantly make you feel connected to different time periods and places. It's kind of like a time machine made of dough and sauce and sugar, and there aren't many other things like it. I'll see you next time.
You guys know the deal by now. If you liked the episode, make sure to like and subscribe and check out other episodes down below. And if you have a vintage or ancient recipe you want us to try out, drop it in the comments. I always love to see them.